So today we are joined by the safest hands in League One, over 100 Fleetwood appearances, 50 clean sheets, more than that now. Alex Cairns, how are we doing, mate? I'm good, mate. How are you? Very, very good. How are we coping without any football at the moment? Uh, no, it's, it's, it's not nice. I won't lie, mate. It's, uh, no, it's, it's, I say it's been difficult, you know, obviously, you know, I've, I've just had a, a little girl, so it's been nice for me in that sense, but you know, not having the routine of, of football and, and training towards the game and stuff. It's been, that's been difficult, but, you know, it, it is what it is. You know, there's, you know, it's football means nothing when it comes to the safety of other people. So, you know, the, the quicker we get past this and, you know, we, you know, we, everyone starts getting and better and safer, the better. So, as being a goalkeeper, how are you keeping fit without, because you, you can keep fit, you can run, you can, it's not the same intensity as training with the lads, but how have you been set training programmes? Yeah, so, to be fair to Jimmy and Newell and, and, and Dave Lucas, they've all sort of pitched in and just sort of said what we should not and shouldn't be doing. Um, obviously, long distance running for goalkeepers isn't, isn't necessarily um, a good thing, but it's also good to do. I, I mean, when I was at training anyway, I'd, I'd sort of be on a walk bike once or twice a week. Uh, anyway, trying to get that distance in. So I've been out on the bike a lot, um, getting my distance in that way. I've done a few runs, but you know it's been more it's been more power based stuff. So sort of circuit training in the garden, then I go out for and, and do sort of, you know little runs with like hurdles and and, and, and like that like burpees that Jimmy said that's uh, brilliant to do. Just loads of like you know body weight stuff. I, I don't really have any weights here. I've got a few kettlebells and stuff like, but nothing really where you know usually I'd be in the gym doing yeah. some power lifting and stuff with you all. Um, but other than that, it's literally the, the keep up to date with programs and stuff that we should should and should be doing. But like like I say, like it's but when we get back anyway, they'll they'll be touching on all that anyway. It'd be like a pre season again, so they'll be touching on that. So I'm, I'm in constant contact with them, and, and I'm, I'm I'm I feel I feel probably fitter than what I was when I left. <laughs> but it's a good time to recover. Well, well, to be fair, as a goalkeeper, you don't have to do much long distance running. That's like a bonus, especially That's with all this. Exactly, yeah. So going back to the start of your career, going through the Leeds Academy, I bet that was quite a good experience. Leeds, massive club. Yeah, I didn't. I don't think I really realised how big of a club it was um, until I started ball boy in the games. Um, I think I first started ball boy when I was like, because uh, growing up, I mean, I used to just used to love football, and I'd literally go watch any team I could really. Um, Obviously, then I signed for Leeds, and then we, uh, I think it was about under 15s or 16, you start being a ball boy. Um, I remember being sat there and, and literally watching every single game every weekend, uh, thinking, wow, this is, this is some club. This That was when they were in the Championship at first, and then they moved, then they dropped to League One. Um, obviously, seeing them go from the Championship to League One back to the Championship. Um, I think, you know, that club is destined for the Premier League again. It's that big of a club. Um, but now, growing up there and learning my trade there was, was something special, without a doubt. So, being there, you didn't, you, you didn't really make many appearances there. How were you, how could you, the managers there that said you were maybe not quite ready, you were a bit young, how, do you see that as motivation to go and see, I'm going to improve you wrong, I'm going to make sure I improve yeah. this on my game? Um, so, it was, it was weird how I left because I left in sort of, Bad circumstances because I'd, I'd been told near enough, I, I got told that Christmas that another contract was being offered to me. It was under under an ownership. Um, I got told a contract was going to be offered to me and then and then I never saw that contract. So when I left, it was a bit like, well, you know, I've sort of been lied to a little bit here. I saw it in the womb a bit. Yeah, it was because I still thought like I had a point to prove at that football club. I thought I, I need something, you know, I, I wanted to go out on loan that season. Didn't end up happening. Um, for whatever reason. Um, so a few things had happened where I thought, do you know what, like, it's probably best I do move on. Um, at the end, uh, I just thought I need to, you know, I need to, I think it was 22 when I left. Um, I thought I, I need to go, I need to go yeah. and get some games but, or, or go and graft it elsewhere where somebody else might take a chance on me. Um, so no, it was, even though it was good, absolutely loved my time at Leeds, the fans, uh, I've always been. I've never had one negative comment from any of the fans. You know, it's it's been brilliant, and I've worked with some great goalkeepers there, uh, which which people don't realise. I think you get a lot of experience from training with loads of different yeah. goalkeepers, um, and it's been good. I, I, I said, I trained with the likes of Casper Schmeichel, Andy Lonergan, um, top top Paddy Kenny, top top goalkeepers, um, and all bring 
some of all, every single one of them has brought something to my game. Um, so learning from them, um, learning from other keepers that are there as well. There's quite a few to name. Um, sort of moulded me into the sort of the goalkeeper I was, and I'm I'm now really. Well, you did make the odd appearance. You came on at Ellen Road. I bet that was and against Blackpool. I think it was, wasn't it? But I bet it was. Against- and I, I know it wasn't the greatest of result, but to be thrown no. in the deep and to come on in, I know it wasn't the greatest of games to come on, but to play in that big ground, I bet it was yeah. a great experience. It was, I remember I remember the game, I'll never forget the game. It was against Matt Jiltz as well. Matt Jiltz was the goalkeeper. Yeah, Blackpool, Blackpool won 5-0, uh, didn't they? 5-0, yes. Yeah. So I came on at half-time. We were 3-0 down and we'd had a red card. Um, the centre-half, Tom Lee's got a red card. Um I remember just saying, like, listen, I got told to warm up and then it was it was bizarre. Like, I, there was a big cheer and, I, you know, I think uh, looking back on that, I felt so sorry for the other goalkeeper. But, yeah. you know, it's, all goalkeepers have a bad day at the office. It is what it is. It's, when, when, you, when you're at a club like Leeds United, though, you know, you, you, can't make, you can't make mistakes because they'll let you know. About it. Yeah. But on the, other, on the flip side of it, when you're doing well, they're the best fans around. So... It's, it's, it's one of them where it's a catch-22 with it, really. But, uh, yeah, I got told at, at half-time by the goalkeeper coach, come on, you know, we need to warm you up for coming on. 3-0 down against Bearing in mind, Blackpool then had just come down from the Premier League. So, they had the likes of John Joe Shelby, Lamar, Luar, Luar. Um, obviously, Jill's in there. Uh, I, don't know if, I don't know if Ian Everett was the centre-half then as well. I can't remember. Um, yeah, they, like I said, they had some, had some great players. That's it, that see that they were... They were battling for, I think, a playoff spot. I think we were just outside the playoffs. And yeah. So to, to get told I was coming on, like Simon Grayson was our manager at the time. I, I, you know, I was, I was dead proud. Dead. It's weird because you're not necessarily nervous. You're more excited at that point. Yeah. It's, everyone says, you know, are you nervous? But because I've just been thrown in, it's like, right, you're going on. It's kind of like it's there was the no time. Way. Yeah, it was the best way. Um, we ended up getting beat 5 nil, so I conceded two goals. Uh, devastated, but... You know, I made a couple of saves in the game. Uh, nothing really I could do with the goals. You know, yeah. one was a top corner and then one was a one-on-one with Shelby. Nice little finish. Um, couldn't really do much about the goals. You know, the manager praised me in the press after and stuff. And and it <laughs> at that point, it was like we were in like a, a tricky spot for the manager. The manager pulled me in that. I remember Grayson pulling just saying, listen, if it was any other game, you know, I'd, I'd sort of give you a little run at it. He said, but we were playing Leicester the next game. Um so he said, listen, he said, obviously, I want you to stay, stay on as my number two as of yet. He said, but I'm going to bring in another keeper. And I thought, yeah, fair play. We're in a playoff spot. And, you know. He's told you it how it is. But yeah, it's, you know, it, it's weird because if it had been, if it maybe it had been at a lesser club or, or a club with not as much stature, or not, there's not much on that, that stage of the season, I think he really wanted to really push the playoffs. Yeah. I think it might have been a little bit different, but obviously he's 18-year-old goalkeeper, you know, holding that. That, the likes of Leeds United on your shoulders. Um, it had been a big, big ask. Obviously, I took on the challenge because, I mean, I trained day in, day out trying to play games. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's yeah. one of them things. But, you know, I look back on that and, and, and thought that, you know, that really made me... I remember playing the game, like, thinking, yeah, you know, this is what I want to do. That's when you realise, you think, yeah, you know, this is what, what we're here, this is what we get paid to do, you know. So, and that, that's when I knew, especially after coming on there, I thought, yeah, this is, this is for me. Like, I, I want to play... Like that in yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I've always wanted to play them in big games. I've always wanted to, to be involved at, at the highest level I can. And, you know, luckily I'm doing that now with Fleetwood. Well, you say about getting games, you did go on, was it to Stalebridge Celtic? And you got a run of games there and got voted player of the season, I bet. Thinking at Leeds, you're not really getting a sniff. But then go on loan, a um, couple of le- le- levels down. But as a goalkeeper, if you're a defender, you can get into a back three. If you're not getting yeah. into a one game, it's, you can easily get back in somewhere. With a keeper, it's difficult. But to go to to that level and really do well, which is tough physical, and get that many games, I bet it was a proud moment. I bet that gives you a sigh of, I can be I can be a number one. Yeah, that was that was my defining season. Like People say, you know, it was a conference, it was conference north level. Um, but I recommend any young player to go and play at that level just to get a taste of it because that's it obviously I say that now I'm looking back the season went really well for me um I, you know I got numerous so I got players player uh, player player of the season sports player of the season and and that for me made me realize yeah I don't go right I, I've always expect, wanted to play high, uh, high and I know I can play at a high level 
But at that moment, I thought, yeah, do you know what? I am. I have proved myself at this level. I'm ready for the next step now, which I thought at that time was league football. Um, so after that, when that season happened, yes, I think I played over 50 games that year. Um, just absolutely loved it, playing week in, week out. And I'd had a couple of sniffs in the January as well um, of clubs trying to, like, I think it was a League Two club that had come in and sort of said, you know, we'll take him. But again, it wasn't guaranteed to play, whereas at Staley Bridge, I was playing week in, week out, loved by the fans, loved by the group of lads that were there, which were a great group of lads. And, uh, and, the, and the manager, you know, was dying for me to stay. So I just, you know, I played that season there. I absolutely loved that. And I remember the, um, the award ceremony. I had to, because I finished the season on the bench for Leeds that year. Yeah. Um, but I, so I had to go back for the last few weeks. I was on the bench for Leeds for the last few weeks. But bear in mind, I just played 50 odd games at Staley Bridge. And I missed the awards ceremony at Staley Bridge because it was the awards ceremony at, um, Leeds. at Leeds. So I was like, wow, I can't believe I've missed that. Um, but anyway, I've got all the lads videoing me like after just saying, oh, yeah, you know, you've won this award, you've won that award. And, and I remember being like sat at the ceremony at Leeds, like, love it, don't worry, I'm loving being part of the Leeds United, you know, it's nice. but part of me wanted to be at Staley Bridge thinking, yeah, I've, I've earned that there. I've not really earned anything at Leeds and I've not, I've not earned anything at Leeds. So I've, I kind of wanted to be, be there as much as I wanted to be at Leeds. I wanted to be there, you know, because it was more about me. I, I had more... I had more inkling there, I had more power there and, and, and stuff like that. And, and don't get me wrong, I, I never really got, a, a, I'm not saying a fair opportunity at least, because, you know, if they'd have thought I was good enough, I'd have probably have played. But at that yeah. moment in time, you know, I wasn't in that place where they thought I was good enough to play. So, like I said, I went on loan to stay the bridge, had an unbelievable year um, and sort of set myself up for, for what, what was to be. So after stay the bridge, you've just played 58. What happened then? <laughs> well. Massimo, Massimo Cellino took over Leeds. Um, yeah. There's been a lot of takeovers. Yeah, I past. mean, I mean, listen, I won't, I won't get into things with him and, and personal attacks or anything like that, but, you know, things didn't really work out. You know, I was supposed to go on loan. I think, it were, I think there were four clubs that season that had basically asked about me and stuff, something with wages and stuff like that. And I wasn't earning a lot of money at Leeds. I was earning a, a, a nice, but not, nothing like, you know, nowhere near. It was a lot of money for out the age I was, for me, yeah. for me. For me. Um, but yeah, it never really, that, that following season, after, obviously after going, I was 20, 21 in the Staley Bridge season, I had a great year thinking, right, I'll bounce out of the conference or League Two level now, I'm ready. Um, and I know, I, know, I know for a fact a couple of clubs had come in because I'd spoken to assistant managers and stuff like that, and, you know, looking forward. And, and Leeds had never let, they wouldn't let me go out. So I was like, well, I'm a tra just a training keeper now here. So I sort of knew then, I'm thinking, I need to go. I need to get, I need to get out of here at some point. And, and obviously that happened. Um, I can't remember what season it was now. Um, but I think it was either a year or two later. Uh, wasn't getting my opportunity at least. The signing goalkeepers. Um, thinking, yeah, that's, you know, that, I sort of knew, knew my time was done there. Where it, whereas I'd not proved, I'd not shown them what I was all about. Which, which was disappointing because I wanted to show the type of personality. Yeah, I want to see the type of personality that you see every week and that the, the, the Fleetwood fans see every week. But listen, it's, I'm sort of glad that's happened because, you know, it's, it's got me to the position I am now. So you did have a couple of long spells. Was it Rotherham, Barrow and Chesterfield? Uh, so I went, yeah, I was at Barrow when I was, Barrow was my first low, uh, but that was in January. And, and to be fair, I think we had seven games in January and five of the seven or four of the seven had been called off. Yeah. And so I wasn't training there. So I was, the manager was like, "Listen," he said, "I've not none of the lads have trained with you or anything like. I can't physically play you for these for this game." Um, I was like, "That's fine." So I ended up January. So I went to Barrow and basically just an experience more than anything because I didn't even get a look in there because it was like, "Well, nobody's seen you. You're not training there because they didn't physically train then. They couldn't because of the snow and whatever in, in January. We, we had really bad. Kind of bad down there, isn't it? So with the yeah, weather. yeah, it was. So um, no, I ended up. I left Leeds and signed for Chesterfield on a six-month deal um, under Dean Saunders, it was. Um, just basically said, I said, listen, I'll sign. I'm going to try and push the keeper at the time. Tommy Lee was a brilliant goalkeeper. Especially, I don't know, I don't know if you've come against, against him at Fleetwood or what. Experienced goalkeeper. Very yeah, good. really good experienced goalkeeper. And he was loved by the Chesterfield fans. And he said, listen, you know, it's, it's there for you and Tommy. Like, you, you, you can have it out. And I was like, right, I'm, I'm up for that. 
he was having a great year to be fair to him so I was never going to get a look in there so six months was coming up I know the goalkeeper coach Mark Crossley at Chesterfield brilliant brilliant guy said like listen I want you here um, I, I, I want to extend this deal but my old uh, manager and youth team manager Neil Redfern had got the Rotherham job yeah but I sort of said listen like I know he, he rang me and just sort of said would you fancy it I just said yeah of course I said like you know obviously I'm not getting a look in at Chesterfield Rotherham in the championship at the time he was like listen I, you know I know what you can do I, I want you to come here and, and challenge Lee Camp so I said alright then I'll, I'll give it a go um, went to Rotherham after that six months um, Redfern were there for a month got the sack and Neil Warnock came in so it was yeah, kind of like revamped them didn't they kind of did stay up towards the end of the season yeah so yeah they just wanted to have a, they wanted to give themselves the best opportunity and they didn't think it was going to happen with Redfern which you know it's hard to say because I thought he was doing a good job he, he, he was trying to change the, the team and, 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 and stuff like this and, and I thought you know that there was a chance either way but to be fair to Warnock came in kept the lads up and one thing I can always say about Neil Warnock he's honest he's straight up and he knows how to he knows how to win games um pulled me straight away, just said, listen, listen, son, because he, he, I went Leeds with Warnock. Warnock was the year I went to Stadium with John Lowe and he let me go on loan to Stadium, which, which I was pleased for. Ended up having that. And then he said, like, listen, um, he was like, uh, this was at the end of the, towards the end of the season, he said, Fleet would have been on the phone um, saying, you know, they, they, they want to have a look at you. He said, listen, you've got a contract here next year as long as I'm here. Um, he said, but, he said, I just wanted to put it out there to you and see what you fancy doing. I said, well, listen, I'm not playing under on the unit right now, I said, Lee Camps, your, your man. Um, I said, like, I'd like to go and, and go and try and, and, you know, just have a look at what, what Fleet was all about. Obviously, I knew about Fleet was from Charlie Taylor. Um, Charlie Taylor spoke so highly of the club, spoke about the chairman, spoke about the fans, spoke about how good the club was to him. Um, so I spoke to him again and just sort of said, listen, there's a chance I might be going to Fleet. What, what do you think? And he was like, oh, mate, you'll love it. He said, best, best, best start of my, to my career, that. He said, really got me going, played a full season there, felt, felt brilliant for it. So, obviously went to, came up for a week at the end of the, what season will it have been? Season where you stayed up on, was it? 2015-16, wasn't it? We, that, we crew on the last game of the season. We, yeah, that's the Presley, season. Presley, he was team yeah, well, Presley was the manager, yeah, Presley, Presley introduced himself to me. Because he wasn't there uh, long before. No, uh, no. Yeah, obviously, Dave Lucas was the one that got in touch, obviously, first. Dave Lucas knew a bit about me anyway from Leeds. Uh, he'd, he'd known about me. He'd been at, I think, a few reserve games and stuff, and he'd, see, he'd seen what I was like. And he sort of said, sort of fit the mould of what Fleetwood were looking at, you know, a goalkeeper trying to prove himself. Uh, similar similar type to, to what Maxi was. Um, yes, thanks for uh, Maxi. Yeah, similar, similar sort of mould, you know, wanting to get games, wanting to, wanting to play, wanting to prove yourself. Um, so obviously I went, came in at Fleetwood, trained for the week, and I remember the game. <laughs> the, the I had a trial game against uh, Wolves. It was, um, and it was obviously the reserve team. Basically, just to have a look at a couple of lads. I, so I trained that week and played in that game. Remember, uh, first five minutes they got a free kick, and I, I, I sort of should have saved it. Like the free kick, I, I thought, oh no. First five minutes, I thought, oh no, no, what have I done here? Let the, it, was, it was sloppy from me. I thought, I'm so much better than that. Um, anyway, first five minutes. Then, then after that, just played really well, made some good saves, distributed the ball well. Um, you know, obviously, Presley was really massive on playing out from the back. And, you know, I, I enjoy playing out from the back. I enjoy playing football. Yeah. Um, and then, obviously, they looked at that side of it and thought, you know, he's actually perfect for what we want. So I, um, I got told, he said, listen, we can't do anything that right now. Uh, we don't know what league we're in and whatever. I think Brett, Brett Steinson was the guy then. He was like, we like That's Alex. Right, yeah. yeah, he said, we like Alex, but we don't know what we're going to do yet regarding it. So I sort of took that thinking, you know, I don't know if they're going to sign me. I know I've done, I know I played well after that first five minutes. I've done, done really well. We ended up being Wolves 5-1, I think it was. Didn't Nick Horton uh, score three or four goals as well? Yeah. Because he was left out for a period of time and he came back in and we played... Yeah. Kind of, he's more like of a, I, I could create a midfielder. We played him, Sarsic yes. and Borley up front at Walsall away on the Monday. We lost like three one, but he was thrown straight back into the side. He's um, Nick Orton with the ball at his feet. Wow! Like, I watched that game and thought, wow, like this guy's an absolute player. But to be fair, you know, you've got in that in that Fleetwood team since I've been there. You look at the team, and you think 
There's some good lads in that team, some good players. Oh, um, and I can honestly say, oh, we'll get into that in a bit anyway. But um, when, so yeah, obviously that that's season ended. They were staying in League One. Um, I get the phone call. You know, we'd like to sign you two year contract. So on straight away. And then it's funny because Mark Crossley then rang me from Chesterfield saying, "Ken, do you want to come back? Like we're like oh, Tommy's struggling with his shoulder. You know, there's, you're going to play next year." And I'm like, "Listen, mate. You know, I've got." Got another opportunity. I said, I sort of had not a bidding war because I was never on a lot of money. Um, but I had two clubs interested in me. And, you know, I got that, it was that buzz back because I thought, you know what, like, I'm buzzing now. I've got two clubs now fighting. Whereas before, when I left Leeds, it was, hard. it was hard, yeah, because I was like, well, nobody's seen me play. They've only seen reserve games. Um, so it was nice because I had two clubs wanting me, two good clubs as well. Chesterfield, really good club, local to me as well, literally 40 minutes away. And that was massive. I'm thinking, that was the pull for Chester. I'm thinking, but then I thought, no, no, I, I want to go away. I want to move away and do go, something and, different. go and do something different because, you know, it's not worked for me in Yorkshire, let's say, at, at that point. I know I've been, obviously, Leeds, Rotherham and, and, and obviously Chesterfield. I thought, no, let, let's, let's go for it. Let's, let's go and have a look what Fleetwood's all about. Uh, Dave Lucas was a massive pull as well. Um, thought, he very, thought he fitted a very similar mould to the way I was. Um, Mark Crossley, brilliant, absolutely brilliant. So I was like, I've got two great goalkeeper coaches here. Don't quite know what to do in terms of that. I just sort of looked at the way the clubs were going. I looked at the training facilities, for instance, the way I'd seen that the, the chairman had invested in Fleetwood. And I'm thinking, you know, Chesterfield, good club, local to home. But then Fleetwood, it's kind of like this okay. up and coming club. Yeah, they want to do something like this. There's, there's this want to... There's this will to go up another level, and obviously I come from the championship. I wanted to get, I want to get back to the championship. That still stays with me now. Um, so that that sort of just made my mind up. You know, I thought, listen, I'm going to have a go. I'm going to move away, um, leave my family, leave my friends, move and, and and get a place in Fleetwood, and and, and you know, and, and have a go at it there. Well, when you signed for Fleetwood, I bet you're thinking deja vu because when you went to Rotherham, you managed to sign you, get get the sack after about a month. Yeah. And then you're thinking, Presley, we have a disappointing pre-season. Um, then we make the call a hard, to... A hard pre-season. That was, was a it? hard pre-season. We came up with some tough teams. Oh, oh no, we, we came up against some pre like really hard teams. Oh. Like, we, we, it was Germany, wasn't it? We came against like the German Premier League. Which I was like... Uh, was how, a, how... Do you remember AZ Alkmaar? That was the... Like, AZ Alkmaar. And I'm thinking, wow, they had Ron Vlaar at centre-half and... And I'm thinking they got they've just said oh, I've just signed this player from 10 million from Greece or something. We were all like, what the hell? And then we played so that we... game. Played that game and they were just like soccer, absolute soccer. And we were just like, don't half time. I think half, half time we've done all we've done half all right. And I'm looking, I'm thinking, saying to the lads, it's obviously red up there as well. I'm saying, some team needs. I didn't get beat 5 0 by them. I remember that. 4 0, 4 or 5 0, was it? Yeah, yeah 4 4 5 0. But, like, it was a tough pre season. And then, it was a tough pre season. But then Uwe comes in, and Uwe had just previously been at Wigan, did really well with them in the playoffs. And then the next yeah. thing, it hadn't quite worked out. Um, a bit like we did with us, but we'll come on to that in a bit. Um, yeah. How did you feel when Uwe came in? Because it's a different German manager. Um, and very, yeah. very, very, a different formation. Presley liked the four-three-three. Uwe yeah. liked the back three. It was, it was, it was difficult for me because I think me and Nilo at that time we both had a really good pre-season. And I know we'd obviously played Liverpool and, and, and stuff, and and I that. And we conceded a few goals, but in terms of the way Presley wanted to play, I think me and Nilo based. I remember we were in when we were in Holland doing the doing the pre-season camp, and me and Nilo were basically just pinging balls wherever we wanted. Both either side of the pitch, and I remember Presley being, you know, absolutely buzzing with us, um, and obviously Luke's and, and and the rest of the coaching staff were well happy, thinking, yeah, you know, we've got two goalkeepers that can play with the feet a little bit here, um, and so I remember going towards getting closer and closer to the season, thinking, there's a, there's a chance I'm starting this season, as did Nilo, you know, obviously Nilo had the experience on me, so I I was never I was never blind to think, you know, Nilo had the number one shirt, I was never blind to think, yeah, do you know what, I respect him. But obviously, I'm up, I'm up there for his place. Um, so, yeah, obviously, Rosa came in and I sort of... I remember getting the, the, the chat before with, with Luke and, 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 and Rosler, to be fair. They both said, listen, 
Ros was like, I know you've had a good pre-season, Luke's has filled me in and what have you. Um, I'm going with Nilo um, as my number one to start the season. He said he's my number one now, he said, but who knows, you know, it's down to you to get the shirt. I was like, that's, you know, I had no problems with that because he's a new manager. You sort of go with your experience when, you know, when you're a new manager. And I think Rob Kelly knew Nilo as well and had Nilo at, at Preston and somewhere. And, you know, let's be honest, Nilo is is and was a good goalkeeper. So, you know, it's, I sort of respected that and thought, yeah, fair play. I'll, I'll bide my time. So, you do start the season on the bench, Nilo number one. And I remember that season up until October time, we were kind of win, draw, lose. We were kind of always between 6th and 12th and we, we just needed that run and you come in at Chesterfield it was 6 or 7 minutes in or something really early in the game and you throw yeah. straight into it and you literally everything that came out you just seemed right you're tipping balls over the bar you're tipping yeah. you had the confidence what was that like at a former club um, as well it was yeah it was it was sort of fitting really that that was the, the team that I saw and made my not start but I made my um, I made my my first appearance for Fleetwood in. I remember Nilo going down and then Rob saying, Kenzie, you're up, pal. Went and got warm and then I could see Nilo was out of it a little bit. So I, I went, I said, listen, he's out cold here. Um, I was like, right, get yourself on. Um, wasn't nervous. Like I said, I've never really, I've never really worked with nerves. Like, I don't get me wrong, I get nervous, but it's not a nerve, it's not a nerve. You play, you play better with nerves. Uh, it was more like a, um, a nervous excitement, but like, you know, ready, a bit of a buzz, like, I'm like, right, this is it, now, come on, chance, chance to make yourself, here's your opportunity that you've been waiting for, you know, you just like, give yourself a little self-talk, and then just in your head you go, play your normal game, play what you, what you normally play, and, you know, in your reserve games and everything that you sort of you've learned. And I remember that game, obviously, I was quite busy, um, you know, uh, played, play, I thought really well, you know, we come away with a 1-0 win. Uh, I remember the lads giving me a big applause at the end of the game, saying, not a bad way to, you know, make your, make your debut. Uh, only my second appearance in the, in the Football League, that was. So I was, you know, I was, I was, you know, I was buzzing. I, was, I thought, yeah, take that. I'm buzzing with this. So after you made that appearance, I, I, I said to my mate, I went, he's got to start. And then you kind of, I was like, how can you drop a keeper? You just come in, done. To, I bet to be dropped, but then go back on the bench. I bet you were a bit gutted. Well, I, I understood why, because it's con it was a concussion error. Like, Nilo had not done anything wrong, bear in mind, that start yeah. of the season. He'd not, he'd not been at fault for, I could honestly say, any of the goals. Um, you know, I worked really close to Nilo, and, and I'd always be honest with him, and he'd always be honest with me. And I could honestly say he'd not really done anything wrong. Um, so I understood when Rosa, you know, pulled me in and sort of said, I've got to stick with Nilo. You know, he's, he's not come out of the team because he's underperforming. He's out of the team because... And I said, listen, that's fine. I said, you know, and that, that was when I said to Rosa, you know I'm ready. Like, I'm, it was like, I know you're ready. I can, I can see that. And that, that then obviously, that performance then was always in Rosler's head. So yes. it's like, you know, we've got a good goal. We've got a good backup here, you know, that's, that's ready, that could potentially obviously be number one. Um, so that was, I think that was obviously always on his mind, always on his, Rob Kelly's mind. Obviously, Dave Lucas knew, knew what I was all about anyway because I work it day in, day out of him. So, it was just then obviously it was just a matter of time of whether I get that other opportunity where he goes right, it's your turn. It was a matter of how the season was gonna go. Yes. Like I say if we were flying, if we were top ten, you know, it might have been a different story, but I think we we're about fourteenth when I came into the team. Yeah. So Well a bit when another thing in Rosett's head was how mature you were about and how you wanted the team to do well and he will have that in mind he goes, not only is a great goalkeeper, he wants the club to do well and I remember we played Southport and then you came back in for the replay. We won, like, it was 1-1. One, one. They, sco they scored, like, really late. Awesome. Which was, it was like, they scored, like, this, like, this, like was, a bolt from the, the blue. Ball, I remember the goal. The ball went to the back post. They headed it back across. And then they scored, obviously, from that. I remember and then we scored, it. like, and three goals in six minutes. And in then, the yeah, and then literally, literally, at the end of that, we were like, right, you know, sort of like, right, stop messing about now, lads. Come on. It was like, let's turn it on. I just turned it on. I think I shouldn't have scored. I think Amari. Few, few, yeah, Amari. A few goals. Like yeah. I thought, wow, yeah. But that that goal, um, and not sorry, that game, the Southport game, the replay went. I remember because uh, I seen Nilo and I think I can't remember who was the other the centre half that got called in. Well, and so either Kean or Ash Easton, uh, one of them two got called in, 
Um, and one of the lads went, you, you could be playing here. Because obviously I was, ah, oh. obviously I didn't have a clue. Uh, it was on the night of the game. And he just sort of said like, oh yeah, just told Nilo. But obviously I seen from the shape when we had the team meeting before that I was playing. Um, and I was like, wow, like this is my game. Um, made a couple of good saves in the game. But that game was the anniversary of the death of my little brother. Um, that day was because my mum and dad were, I know they were having fireworks and, you know, like a, a sort of a gathering at home. And I said, listen, I obviously had a game, can't, I can't come home for it. And they were like, oh, no, no, of course we get it. But it's funny because obviously they were sort of, it was a day of mourning for us. But that day now has changed from a day of mourning to a day of sort of, it was my, it was my start, it was my first start. Um, it was like, right. They, they, I remember they, my mum and dad rang me straight after they were on. I've got videos of them, people videoing them saying, like, Oh, he's playing because Sky Sports said, so, Oh, uh, Alex Kane starts for the Fleetwood and this and that. And obviously, they were absolutely buzzing. Um, so, as you can imagine, you know, they're obviously upset in its anniversary, as, as was I, you know, but I had a game to play. And still, still sticks to me that, you know, I was destined to play that game. And one of my mates actually plays for Southport, one of my really close friends, Callum Allen, he was the captain for them that night. And he hugged me because he knew, he knew obviously the day as well because he was meant to come for the firework display and stuff. He saw, he saw it was meant to be and then, you know, yeah. never looked never look back. happiness, that. really. You'd be proud. Yeah, as much as it is awful, uh, it was a day of happiness as well. I'm sorry to hear that, mate, but I'm glad you... you, you, no, you fact, yeah, you, you know the story, mate. It is what yeah, it is. It's, 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 it's a horrible story, but I know I'd be so proud of you. Um, <laughs> and it's, it's a pretty, it's a, like, fitting way to... Make 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 your proper first yeah debut at Hyber really yeah in the FA Cup as well the FA Cup I love that competition always have them so Brilliant. it was it was nice well it was funny because the game after Southport I think we played Chesterfield and because that was when we played yeah you, you sometimes had a game like you you you'd play yeah. in October you play again in November which is weird I bet you were thinking. What were you thinking after that Southport game? Were you thinking I could be in or Nilo? What what happened after, then? After the Southport game, I thought, you know, we, we'd gone through as well, which was another big thing. You know, it might have been different if I'd have, if I'd have sank. You know, if I'd have, if I'd have not performed, but I knew I'd perform well. Um, then I got the nod from that, like training that week. Obviously, I, I sort of got the vibe that I was starting again in the league, which then obviously I did. Um, played well again, and then you know, so, so I think I think. You know, the gaffer Rosler created a formation as well as Nilo had not played in the formation 3 5 2. He'd only played the previous, which I think we were playing 4 3 3 before, or some type of 4 4 or 4 5 1 or some sort of different formation. And the gaffer changed it to 3 5 2, which I started with. And, oh, well, I started with the 4 at first and then we went to the 3 5 2. Um, and then that's when, you know, we really kicked on that year. We sort of had some sort of, you know, I don't know wasn't just me. I think George Glendon made the same start as well. He played the Port Vale game before the FA Cup and then he played from then on. There was a few players that sort of really stepped up to the way, you know, the new gaffer wanted to play and so, you know, we weren't, we weren't letting go of our shirts. One thing I noticed with the 3 5 2, you talk about you playing up from that, you love to like roll it out or throw quick release. Did that really suit you? Yeah, I've, I've, I've always enjoyed, you know, I think, I think, you know, it sounds silly, but Pep Guardiola has always said your goalkeeper's your first form of attack. And I don't know wherever he got that from, <laughs> where he got that from. He got that from somebody else. But, um, and I've always believed that. I mean, I, I always looked for the counter-attack because, you know, we, we'd soak up a lot of pressure. Uh, you know, when we had the likes of Ash Hunter that would take the ball anywhere. We had the likes of, um, okay. yeah, the Vante uh, that were really good at, you know, sort of coming to show and rolling players. I think we had Longy for a bit as well then, didn't we? Yeah, we had Long, we had David Ball, yeah. we, we had a yeah, lot like, of well, good firepower. Borley, I could give the ball to anywhere and he'd just take it. A lot of players, George Glenn, then I could roll out to him and take it. You just get players that would just take the ball where, because they knew they were going to get the support of, you know, and obviously different tactics and different formations give different things, but three five two really settles up well for a counter-attack. And, and that was something that was big for me, you know, come for a cross and distribute quickly. And, and you know, I tried to do the bits of that throughout because if there's a chance that's on you know you do it and the more you do it teams sort of sit back and then you have your chance to play so I do tell still you know I do try that that wasn't just that just sort of give itself to me Ros Roberts yeah. what I mean listen you can see the character type just do it uh, so it gave me that freedom to do that um, so that, that you know that worked for us really well 
So, like you say, we went on that amazing run, and it was. Yeah. Yeah, I remember the point where we lost. We kind of it was one one, and they scored late again. And I remember there was a bit of like Longy and Anthony Grant. Anthony Grant took his shirt off. It was like yeah, havoc. And then, but then after that, we beat Shrewsbury at home. Then we just went on this magnificent run where we seemed if we were draw, if we were losing, we'd score late. If we were drawing, we'd score yeah. at Oldham at home. We were, it was a poor nil nil. We scored, I think they got an own goal. Was it Edmondson, uh, own goal? We won one nil. Um, yeah. Charlton away, uh, one nil down, one one. Coventry away, one nil nil, one nil win. Sheffield United away was a brilliant night. Yeah. Won two that nil. was amazing. That 18 game run, what changed? I just think, I think, you know, credit to where credit's due to that, you know, to that hierarchy of sort of Fleetwood, the sort of players that they bring in. There are certain mould, you know, of there's a point to prove. Um, there's players that were already there that had a point to prove that they can play at that next level. And it's not just that, it's the type of players, that, the type of people that you've got in that dressing room. And I can honestly say, you know, every year, whether it be a promotion push, whether it be a relegation battle, whatever, whatever has been pushed towards the lads, they've, they've constantly, you know, given absolutely everything. And I think, I think we just rolled with the punches that season. You know, it, it sort of you had teams come up against us like, all right, then you know, we'll we'll see you out, we'll we'll outrun you, we'll out we'll outwork you, and then we'll just score in the last minute when you're all knackered. It was just, I don't know, it was, you know, you know, some people might say, oh yeah, they're just that team that's going to run, but you know, the training and the work that went into that run. Um, made that run, you know, and the, and the work and, and the group of lads that, that were there made that run. And, you know, we've got something very similar right now. Absolutely, like, that run, but all good runs, I remember this Gunthorpe game, it was, like, 1-0 and you said you couldn't see anything for the first half. And, like, I think they had two goals disallowed in the second half, didn't they? And they were disallowed and then. I think Bobby scores down the other end. Um, yeah. I think Bobby used to play for Scunthorpe and scored great finish to in the Bolton game. I remember that was the Fondry scores like this oh, cross. God. Luke's goal I've ever seen. And it was, it. It, I think it was he just returned to Bolton as well, and it just yeah. he scored two early goals and then Demps Dempsey scored and then but we ended up losing four two. But how did that? From winning and drawing every week to losing, how did you react to that? Um, well, if you if you see, you know, we sort of reacted pretty well to it because we were still until the last day up with an opportunity to take second spot. Absolutely. Uh, so the reaction to that was, all right, yeah, we'll dust ourselves down. But we'll, we'll, you know, I think it was Swindon that beat, did our run. Was it Swindon that broke the run before that, or was it Bolton? It was. Um, well, we went on the eighteen game run, and then the, do you mean the start of the run? No, the end. So the end because we got beat by Swindon. I thought that Swindon game was the one that did us. Oh yeah, one, yeah, yeah. At home we lost one nil. Yeah, we, we, I that thought was the next that's the game. Because remember, we kind of went like without scoring in a few games. If you remember, we drew nil nil yeah. to Bury away, nil nil to yeah. Oldham, and then we drew. I think nil nil to Wimbledon at home, and then we drew lost nil one nil to Swindon. And I was kind of thinking, goals have dried up, and and yeah. then and then we play Oxford and we win three one, and we're like. We, we, we'll chase you, Bolton. Whatever you do, we will come and hunt you. And then, chilling him away, I'll, I'll never forget this. I go in to the ticket office, try, but no coach left. So, I go and spend the money on something else. And then, they put a second coach on as soon as I book something else. And then I'm like, so I can't go. And I just hear it on the radio, 2-2, two, two, and I'm like thinking, oh, it's over. And I just hear Dempsey, and it's just 3-2, and I'm absolutely... That's that chilling game, like wow, it was mad because the, they scored. So the, their first goal, they took a deep corner. The guy's headed back across, hit the post. He's hit the back of my foot and gone in. I'm like, how's that even happen? I remember it. I'm thinking one 0 down. Anyway, we fought back one one. Then they got a free kick, and it's coming safely into my hands. That so he's, he's hit it, and ball is on. So I've got ball on the wall here, and the rest of the wall. And he's, he's hit it in between the wall. So I'm literally going down that side just to get a safe hand. And like, ball is deflected it, which he should do because he's hit it well. Deflected it, it's gone into the bottom corner. I'm like, we're 2 1 down now. And I'm thinking, wow, like, where's that gone? Anyway, we get to 2 all. I'm thinking, hang on, we've, we've still got a chance here. We've still got a chance. 
And then obviously Dems does that, like, wow. That it was, was the run was, as well. It was the run. Yeah. You see, he was, oh, he was, he was like thing. a madman. He was like a madman. And then yeah, to yeah. finish it, like, the way he, you could just say he was unbelievable. And then to go into that last game of the season, I remember, I think Bolton played Peterborough and we yeah. played Port Bay. And Port Bay had switched to play for the needing to stay up and Pete Brad nothing to play for. And Bolton won 3 0. And I remember we had to go to like Millwall and the play. And none of our, we, we were like, oh, I don't want to go to Millwall. So I remember we had to go disallowed. So if we score, we play Millwall. If we draw, we play Bradford. So because we want Bradford it's closer. I remember yeah. we were like, no, we don't score. And we scored. And it, we got disallowed. And we were like, for the first time, because we knew we weren't going up as automatic, we were like, you know, like we get well, we Yeah, get, I remember that game because I remember I thought we were always going, I thought we were going for the win all the way because, you know, I didn't know at that time. And then I could just tell by sort of the deflation of the stadium, I thought, oh, B Bolton have won. And so I, it's, I can't, you know, there's no way we're in the playoffs. So it doesn't matter. I, I'd have been happy with any team. I know, I know obviously everyone, you know, looking back on it, would Millwall have suited us better? I don't know, you know. If I remember rightly, we got bombarded by Millwall that year, so it probably oh, like trying you, to go. We, we, we can't go on a talk to you without Millwall game. I remember it was, we, you made so many, the Northampton game, I remember, we started pouring the Northampton game and you made a terrific save 20 minutes and 10 minutes later we won the up. And at Millwall, I remember, I think you made 10, 11 <laughs> save and it was just like, busy day. it was like the Millwall players were just, the Millwall fans behind the goal were like, is he, is he human? Like, but you made a foot save, you made like a couple early on. I think, um, the big man up front, he called, oh, I can't remember his name now, uh, Steve Morrison. Steve Morrison. Um, but I bet that was a good day, Millwall at home. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I know Millwall, obviously, a big club for, for League One level. Um, I knew they were obviously trying to, we all knew that they were trying to get into the playoffs, whereas we were the sort of the team that was in form, it was like, come and beat us type of thing. Um, and I remember, obviously, Millwall just went right at him. Fair, fair play to him. But we saw, again, just that, that that squad, you know, they just, not just, you know, obviously, I know I made a few saves and what have you, but just that game in general, I think Ben Davis scored the header. And it was sort of, as soon as he scored that header, I think we all knew, you know, this is our game today. You know, just everything was going for us. Everything was going for us. And, you know, that Millwall game, it was, you know, a great game. I, I really, you know, really excelled in that game. But, you know, looking back on 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 my whole fleet with Korea, you know, I'd like to think I've always been there, you know, for the team and I've always been in the playoffs. Um, but going on to the playoffs, it was it was a disappointing end, and I thought I thought for the first eighty minutes at Bradford, I thought we really shut them out well, and they scored. Was it Roy McCann scored a hat? I'm like thinking, I'm thinking one nil. What what was going back to home? What were you thinking at one nil? Well. I always thought we would get. I thought we had a couple of half opportunities at Bradford, and I thought if they were going to score past us like any team, it'd be something from like a set piece or, you know, if if they was to score, I couldn't really see anyone scoring past us that year. Um, but if they was to score, you know, it'd be something just that little something, either a mistake or something little. Um, obviously, McArdle, you know, gets the run, which which they were good at. Uh, Bradford were really good at set pieces, and you know, and they took their only opportunity. They took their only opportunity. Whereas I thought we had a couple of opportunities where we thought, oh, come on, you know, it just wasn't quite. It was probably just a hurdle too far. And you know, we give it, we give everything to that season. And, you know, it just yeah. wasn't meant to be that year. It just wasn't. Meant we to we be. had quite a thin squad as well, and I think we yeah. played. I think we played up to. I think when Rosa came out, we nearly played sixty games that year because we had six in the yeah. FA Cup. We we yeah, replayed yeah. in every single one. We had the trick or trade, We had three or four in there. So already you're thinking that's fifty seven, and then. The Capital. That's fifty. I think we had fifty-eight games in that season, yeah. and it was going back home. They get, at one nil, they get always believe that we're Ivory. You're coming to our ground now, and we'll. Oh, without without a doubt. I mean, I had. I remember I had thirty people come to the Bradford game. Obviously, being quite local to Doncaster, I had thirty of my family and friends coming, and some of them bought separate tickets as well. And then I had the same come up to Fleetwood. So I'm thinking, like, this is destiny. You know, we've got. We're we're going to be at home. Nobody want. Nobody likes to come to Fleetwood for a game. No. Nobody's. It's, you know, it's, proven, it's proven, yeah, it's proven. The wind machine's on. Uh, nobody nobody wants to come all up that way. It's far for everyone. It's the perfect place to build your fortress. And you thought, we knew we weren't going to get beat that game. It was a case of, lads, you'll get your opportunity. When your opportunity comes, take it. We didn't get that. We didn't get that opportunity okay, that was right. clear for, 
you know, it was an unlucky, it was unlucky, and you know, it's probably just a step too far for us that that you know that that season. You know, I thought in, in we'd have had to took anyone in the playoffs. I'll always take any game, you know, because it's just who rises to the occasion on the day. And, and you know, Bradford got there. Day in Wembley, you know, Millwall beat them, and you know, it would, if we had gone, would it have been different? Who knows? But you know, it's it's one of them where you know I thought that was a really good opportunity to go up. Uh, didn't quite happen, so you know, live and learn. And I thought, you know, that from that season, I think I played thirty uh, odd games or whatever it was, and I thought, yeah, you know, it's a really good solid season for me. Recreated myself, become my become a, a name um, within just that short space of time, and, and you know, it's obviously. Push my career to what it is today. So going on to that second season in Uve, that's okay. Um, what do you what do you think changed uh, in the approach? A few things. You know, you got to admit, Rosler and, and Rob Kelly are, are great coaches. Um, yeah. they, they're brilliant with us. Um, you know, I thought we lost a few key key players that season. We lost oh, Bory. Exactly. Uh, because if you know, if you remember rightly, Connor played a lot of times in holding midfield as well. Yeah. You know, we did. We didn't have a lot of midfielders. Connor played a lot in holding midfield. Um, we lost him. It was obviously a big character. We lost Jimmy Ryan, big character in the dressing room. We lost some. We lost some key players, and you know, we sort of we something wrong. We signed some good players, but we we sort of bought, brought in young players, which young and hungry players, which is what Fleetwood's you know molded themselves on. Um, and I'm not saying it was a signings, but there was just you know we we changed our training schedule. There was just a few things. Don't wrong, we started off brilliant. We won three out of three. Yeah. So it was kind of like we'd gone, we'd, we'd started off brilliant. We bounced into the next season. We signed some great players. Coy, as you know, is Unbelievable. one of the best signings we would have ever made. Um, we signed some good players. Aidan O'Neill, good player. Um, so, yeah, so we signed some good players. It was just, um, don't know, you know, it's, it's that same old story in, in League One, especially where the team that goes in the playoffs ends up being in a, in a relegation scrap. It's just a weird one what happens. Um, and I don't know, we just couldn't we just couldn't quite find that consistency that we had the season before. Um, yeah. And I, I can't put my finger on it. I can't blame anyone for it. I just think, you know, it was just one of them seasons where everyone thought, all oh, right, these think, these think they're something. And everyone sort of stepped the game up. We had that little bit more respect in the league. And I don't know whether, we were, you know, we, we were ready for that. So, you know, it's hard to say for me. Um, what, but that was a great season for me, learning-wise, like experiencing, yeah. you know, Difficult the season, times. how it can, yeah, how, how it can go up and down, and and that was that was a that was a real good season to me for my own head, my own my own game, and um, so yeah, I took a lot from that. So I remember towards the Gillingham game, you had a you we lost two 0 I think it was Gillingham just before Christmas. Gillingham, that, yeah. that that was the point where we thought. Oh God, we're, we're, we're in a bit... Because remember the, the, the week before we played Peterborough and we were 2-1 up and I remember Jack Selby hit the bar from a free kick and they scored yeah. two two goals and then yeah. it was like, dust ourselves off, we go again. And because you well, I made, Yeah, I made a mistake in the Peterborough game. I tried to pick up a free kick and it sort of just... It's moved and bounced off me like it's bounced off my shoulder. Yeah. And got that man that scored the tap in for the winner. Um, you know... I think Rosluff wanted to drop me then. Um, didn't he drop me the game after where I'd not done anything wrong? Uh, he dropped me the game after. Um, so I thought, yeah, obviously it's already in his head that he was going to drop me. Um, I think it was Christmas Day, I got told as well. He told me Christmas Day, so Merry Christmas, Alex. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, no, but listen, I said, yeah, the team's not doing well. I just thought I, I was scapegoated a little bit. Yeah, um, you know, I, I was. I thought I was, you know, I was still make. I'd, I'd have put all my hands up. I thought if I'm having a howler, you know, consistently, I think it. Oh, I'm not doing the best for the team. I'd have thought, yeah, fair enough. But you know, he had Nilo on the bench there, an experienced goalkeeper, been in relegations, been in promotions. So he thought it's a straight swap. I didn't really have anyone else on the bench really that I thought he could have changed. So I thought, yeah, I'm the easy target. Um, change me, you know. Results didn't even didn't even change. So that's when I knew. I thought this, you know, there's a deeper problem than than just a goalkeeper, as there always is. I agree with you because I said I said I went I went I was gutted for you because I knew I like how good you had been and it's like it's like you made one mistake against Peter and it's like go yeah. if, if say for example Ball or or Devante when if they made a mistake for Fleetwood they they're not always going to get the stick as a goalkeeper going to do and I thought the best thing is to do with a goalkeeper yeah. is stay confident in them and 
you know, something may good come of it. And I don't remember we won the old game, but I was still like, I was like, it doesn't feel quite. I went, I went, cracks over papers because Oldham were poor. Oldham weren't the greatest side that season. I, yeah. thought, I thought we should have done better. Even against the Berry side, I went, we've won two games, but look at the side we've beaten. They, they're not, I think Berry and Oldham both went down that season. Yeah, uh, that's why I, that's why I felt hurt by it because I was like, if you're gonna if you're gonna you know try and turn the results around, you know at least at least play me in the games where you're expected to win. And then if I'm messing up or you know you sort of you sort of go, yeah, do you know what? It's time. I, I could accept that, but I couldn't accept that at that time. I wasn't happy about it. I won't lie. You know. I'm not just, you know, I'm not a pass player. I don't think, oh, look what I have done and stuff like that. It's kind of what I'm doing now. And I just saw it as I was the easy target. Um, you know, I'd only played at that point, I think it was 40-odd games, 50 games maybe max. You've yeah. got a keeper on the bench there, Nilo, that's got over 250 games. It was always it was always going to be me, you know, when we were in a struggling season. So I thought, is what it is, you know, train normal, get back to, back to basics, just do keep my you know keep my head stay calm and you know what will be will be and you know obviously I think I don't know if it was seven games later or eight games later I don't know how many games it was I was back in so exactly I, I was always hoping like I wanted the team to do well but I was like it, I, I wanted you to come back into the side because Neil great keeper um has got that experience obviously done really well with Salford um got promotions with them um fair play to him for doing that but I just felt at the time Morale was low. That's where you need to give your squad a massive encouragement. Like, how, did you know it was just during that run? Did you know it was the squad dip a bit? What in the in you know morale. in the run that in morale? Uh, yeah, when you're losing games, it does though. That's when you're losing games. Everyone's like, uh, you know. But again, you know, I, I knew. I think we all knew we've got the squad. You know, we've had numerous meetings. We've got the squad, so there'll be nowhere near a relegation battle. Like nowhere near, we should be nowhere near it. But it's about doing it. You know, we can all yeah. talk a great game. We can all talk about how good we are and how good last season was and how good we've done. And so like, it's all about like right here, right now. And I think you know, um, for whatever reason, we just couldn't get out of that. And you know, we put obviously the gaffer and, and, and the assistant and whatever are, are trying to find solutions, which is the job to do that. And we just couldn't find that solution. It just it just wasn't happening. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's it's tough because when when you're on a when you're on a winning run, the players' legs, players' mind, the, you, you can play every day, and you would not because you get used to it, don't you? And then yeah. kind of when you're losing, it's kind of like it takes longer. You're disappointed, and it kind of takes more out the the head, the legs, draining, doesn't it? And then, and then because we, I think did you come back in at the Doncaster game, obviously. Uh, place yeah. that you're is that where you're from, Doncaster? Um, yeah. So I bet you were. How did you find out you were back in the side then? Um. So I just I sort of found out on the day. Um. I sort of knew because obviously results had not changed or whatever and what have you. So sort of, I've been training well as well. Like I, you know, I always give everything in training because I know there's you know that's the only place you're going to get back in the team, um, and or keep your place. Um. So I got I got told and I was like, all right, yeah, you know, I was I was calm about it. I just thought, yeah, that's fair enough, you know. We were just trying to find something and we just couldn't get out of it. Like in that Donny game, obviously they scored, they, you know, they won three nil, two nil down at half time. They scored that third one early in the second half. It's like so, something's just not right. We just can't get out of the slump, you know. We were trying. The lads are putting in extra work, you know. There's everything everything going on, and and, and when your team's low on morale, when the team's low on confidence, you know, it's so hard to get out of. It. And, you know, obviously, unfortunately, the book lands with the manager. You know, that's just how it is. If yeah. the manager doesn't get results, you know, the players don't lose the contracts. They might be told they can leave, but they don't lose the contracts. But managers, you know, and, and then get stacked. And it was, it was um, after that Doncaster game, it was really, you know, it was a sad day because, you know, Rosler gave me my opportunity. You know, Rosler got me, made me the name I am. Um, you know, he, he picked me, he put faith in me and, and you know, he, he gave me my first step in, in in my football career, so I'll be forever grateful for that. Uh, you know, there's obviously things along the way that I didn't agree with with him, but you know, yeah. I'm a human being; I'm not going to agree with certain things. Um, you know, he he made the decision to drop me. His decision, you know, it stands with him. Um, it was just, you know, so, to the chairman, he knew there's something had to change, and you know, unfortunately, the manager gets sacked, and it's sad to see somebody lose the job. Um, but he went, obviously Rob Kelly went and 
you know, that we sort of were just waiting them for the new manager. So did you kind of get the inkling after that Doncaster game, they're going to be on the way? Uh, no, I think it's, we didn't. I don't think I think he signed a new contract that year, didn't he? Um, yeah. Uh, so I thought, like you know, I, I know for a fact the chairman's loyal to his to his players, to his yeah. staff, to. So he wanted everything. He wanted Rosa to work out. He wanted the whole thing to work out because of how well he'd done and how well how how sort of professional the squad was. And you know, we just it just wasn't you know things happen in football where you know, they're out of your control and, you know, it's a team game at the end of the day and if, if everyone's not pulling away, you know, the results are going to start going down. And obviously, they did that season and, you know, he unfortunately lost his job. It was it was a shame. I mean, it felt like the end of the year and I remember kind of having it on the way home thinking, I'm waiting for the announcement here and it came, yeah. it, I was kind of like, like the longer time went on, please don't be an announcement and then yeah. it did kind of happen and then, we, I think on the Thursday, we appoint John Sheridan, great manager, yeah. had experience at Oldham, really did well there as a player and a manager come in. And, and honestly, if you want a manager to go to, I know he, he's tried and trusted in getting teams out, but he just brought man management, I thought he was brilliant with. What did you think when Chess came in the building? Well, when Sheridan came in straight away, he had this or about him where you knew everything was just going to be just relax like have a, have a breath a minute came in to the uh, and had a meeting with us and just said lads you, you, you're a great group of players he said I've played against you so obviously with Oldham and, and what have you he said you should not be in the position you're in he said we've got how many I think 13 how many games 13 13 13 games left he said let's go try and win them all that was like his attitude all the way through never too high Never too low, just kept so calm all the way through. And obviously, the, the run we went on under Sheridan, we could have probably got promoted. So it's just. <laughs> hey, can I remember the first. Thing. Sorry, go on. It was the, it's the weirdest league. It's the weirdest, it... weirdest league. But the best league as well. It's hilarious. Like, it's so fun to be in. Oh, absolutely. Because I remember we drew the first three, didn't we? We drew to Charlton, Plymouth, and MK Dons. And yeah. he said, yeah, that was. He said we wanted to be top of this mini league kind of. Uh, then yeah. after those three draws, we I remember going to school every, every every day depressed, like going oh we've lost at the weekend again we've we've lost at the week and I just remember that Rochdale game and uh, it was I think it was March March twentieth something like that and we won two 0 I think Geordie Wheeler scored last minute and I can't remember who scored the first goal. Uh, but... Yeah, um, Dem scored the the goal didn't he? Dem scored the one that. Jordy we were scoring last minute, Dent scored, where yeah. Paddy had the shot, the keeper saved it. Oh yeah, rebounded it, yes yeah. he did. Yeah. Um, and it was just, it was kind of like, all game was kind of one nil up and they could get a goal and who was going, it was like, we've won. Like, yeah. that, and then after that I went, we're going to run in, we beat Northampton. Yeah. That, we beat... that win was massive because, as you, I think everyone saw in the games previous, um, in the in the games previous, that um, you know, it was it was a matter of any time we could we could we could go on this run. Like we, we it was all it was the same case all season. Um, you know, we were all waiting just to get that bit of consistency, that bit of form. And you know, we started finally shutting teams out, like we, the nil nil games and the MK Don game. Um, it was just it was just I, we sort of just knew it was coming. Then it was like right, we kept building in, building in. And, you know, we we're having fun in training. Everything's going bouncing. The atmosphere was great again. And then, you know, you know, wins just come as they are then. Because I think we played, obviously, 13 games and we won seven and drew three of that. And to get 24 points out of a team that only had something like 36 points prior to that in 33 games, it's, it's an unbelievable turnaround. It is actually is an unbelievable turnaround. And, um, you know, went on that run and you sort of we were not obviously nowhere near relegation at the end. It's like we were close to probably to promotion than we were relegation. Um it was kinda of like, yeah, you know, we've not had the best season but something definitely to build off. So after that season then, um we stay up pretty well. The end of the season awards go quite well and then we pretty much safe. What do you what's the next step then? Do you think Sheridan's gonna stay at the club? Um, I don't, I didn't, I don't know if, I didn't think he was, you know, obviously cemented in, I think that basically the chairman employed him to do a job and, you know, he did it 
unbelievably well. And, and in all fairness, he probably deserved the full-time job at that point. Um, but I just think, you know, in terms of the club, we wanted to build some. We wanted to build something from, you know, scratch again. You know, and and sort of go go on. Then we're, we're going to try, you know, a new manager, a new philosophy, and you know, fair play to the chairman, Victor the gaffer that we currently have today. And when Joey came in, it was eyebrows raised, and everyone paid attention to Fleetwood Town for the first time in a in a long while. And the first one of the first thing he did was. I put you to number one. I bet that was a proud moment. Uh, yeah, he spoke to me obviously when we got when he got the job. Uh, I think he rang around all the players. He spoke to me, um, so sort I of said, he, he, you know, he basically looked at, at what I'd done and my progress and stuff like that, and uh, just sort of said he was looking forward to working with me. Um, explained that uh, he thought, you know, I was probably the best goalkeeper in the division, if not the best, um, and so that's where it started from. So obviously straight away, you know, you've got a manager that, oh, that is in your, singing your praises straight away, you know, without even working with you. So, you know, that was nice to hear, um, you know, and obviously he took the job and pre-season was tough and, and so on. But it was it was just brilliant to get number one. And then we kind of, we we have a brilliant pre-season. We've been in some good players. I think we've been Craig Morgan, um, experienced, good leader, Dean Marnie, uh, Premier League experience. We bring a lot of great players to the football club. We get Louis Coyle back on loan and like another good loan signing. Um, I, think, I think we did James Husband in that season. And it was, we had hope to then, I think we, we kind of started, so we lost the first game and then how, because the last couple of seasons we drew and won the games. How did that affect you in losing the first game? Well, we lost the first game. Um, and I think it was because we'd had such a good pre-season, I think everyone expected us just to bounce into that year and go on at this man winning streak and whatever. But it was probably the best thing that happened to us losing that first game because I think a realisation kicked in. Of, you're playing league football now, regardless of what level you've played at, regardless of how well you've done in your personal careers. It's kind of like... This is like this, you know, we're, we're starting the campaign, like, regardless of what you've done in pre season. So, I think it was a good thing that we sort of lost that game because everyone saw, sort of oh, hang on a minute, are we as good as what we've, we've spoken about within the dressing room and stuff like that? And then we bounced straight back. Was it, uh, we played Oxford away the second game. Is that yes, correct? we won 2 0. 1 2 0, yeah. And I think that's when we thought, yeah, you know, that's the, it's, it's, a, it's a good game to win away from home. Um, so, yeah, it was. Yeah, it was a it was a it was a good season. Was well, a good season. going going back, it'd be rude not to speak to you about the treble save. Um, that first of all, I by the way, I didn't see it. I was at the game; the sun was in my eyes, and I, I thought you made the what? I knew you made the first save, but I thought he kind of put it over. The top, and my mate Matt, he went, he went. How has your keeper say he was the amount of angry emoji? He was like. To not just to save the first one, to get back up and then resilience, really, not to get up the second time, the third time. How how did you keep the ball out? I just think, I think, you know, goalkeepers in general have always been known to just be a little bit mental, aren't they? So you just throw yourself in front of the ball and make sure you don't go in the net. I think that's always been the trait from day one of goalkeeping, you know, stop the ball from going in the net. And to be honest with you, Ben, that's the... You know, you can talk about techniques and you can talk about the ways, you know, people can break that save down as much as they want. But at the end of the day, I decided not to concede a goal. Uh, and that's how I've always been. You know, I don't want to concede goals. It's just, it's not what I do it. Um, so, you know, at that moment in time, you know, I managed to keep the ball out on another day, you know, probably goes in the second attempt. Uh, but, you know, at that moment in time, I made sure, you know, I wasn't letting anyone pass. And, you know, I saw her. So that's you know what maybe that's what made me sad that I got dropped that year because I thought I'm making I'm making the saves I'm playing well and you know I know it's a few months down the line but you know I was still I was still performing and, and playing you know we, I can't say well, I'm performing to my best because we wouldn't be in that position if we were yeah. but I was definitely performing to a standard where I should have kept the shirt um, and sh shown a little bit more faith that's what I thought anyway and that's my personal opinion that's you know nothing from what's been relayed on or whatever but that's my personal opinion and I'll stand by that. Um, but yeah, that you know, that triple save is, is something that I'll definitely um, when I look back on my career in, in the future. I'll definitely you know look back on that save and, and be very very proud of it. Well, to get the a tweet from the second best keeper in the world behind, obviously yourself, David De Gea. I bet that was, <laughs> I bet that was uh, a pretty good. I bet you thought 
brilliant. Like goalkeepers yeah. love to stick together. And like yeah. when when they save his mate, it's like fair play. Yeah, there's a, obviously they've got the GK union that everyone's quite you know well aware of. Um, but you know when when a great goalkeeper you know such as David de Gea or you know it could have it could have been from anyone that plays in the Premier League. You know as soon as they give you recognition for something that you've done, something that they work on every day is you know it's. It's it's definitely something that you know. I remember Sam Duffy, the media man, coming out saying, "Oh, you know, after training, literally came running out saying, oh, the hair's tweeted you." I was like, "Yeah, good one, mate." Yeah, I was just laughing and joking. It was like, "No, the hair's tweeted because Sky Sports have been in that day as well to talk about the save." Um, and I was like, "Yeah, good one." So he showed me showed me his phone. I was like, "No way." Just nice, just nice, you know, to get that recognition from some some from somebody who's played at the elite level, you know, the level that, that, that we all aspire to be at. And no, it was nice for me. Well, obviously, we, you're a fantastic goalkeeper and sometimes we've got a bit of downtime. We've seen you win the, the darts challenge, Alex the Arrow Cairns. Is that something you like doing in your spare time? Well, obviously, that. Uh, so last year, um, just for, since sort of Louis, not the first year, but definitely the second year, Louis sort of moved in with me. Uh, I just said, obviously, I, I, I'm renting a place, you know, come and live with me if, you, you know, if you're looking to find a place. Um, so Coily came and moved in with me. Um, don't get me wrong, I, I, I like the darts. Um, not a massive watcher of it, but I like the darts. You know, if it's on, I'll, I'll have a little look and stuff like that. But more like a job, I prefer to play it. Yeah. So anyway, he brought one, in, he brought one into the changing room, and then I was like, oh, I'm going to get one. So I got one for home. Um, I got one for, for Fleetwood, uh, my place there. Um, and we just, just constantly playing, you know after training and whatever, we'd have a few games and we'd have Big O come round and a few of the lads have been round, we've had numerous to tournaments, I've had big suits, dents, where's Big O, obviously all the lads come, come, uh, were coming round and we've had some, we've had some fun laughs at my line playing the darts. Well, at the club, we know there's a lot of good golfers at the club, can, can we settle down, who would say the best golfer is at the club then? <laughs> I'd like to say me, but I'll be honest with you, I'm, I'm pretty terrible. Um, no, I, I sort of only just started playing. I only started playing properly, really, when I came to Fleetwood and started having a few games and stuff. Because obviously being up there, I thought I'll get into something. Um, more when Louis came. I know Louis really good at his golf and, and plays a lot. So I'd probably say, on handicap, Louis probably the best. And to be fair, I've played with him the most. So I'd say, yeah, I'd probably say Louis the best golfer. But there's a few bandits there. Because Big O plays... Big O, last time I played with Big O, I think he played off 16. When, and he shot so many under. So I'm just not having that he plays off 16. But I'll give him it because he's bigger and I love him to bits. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I'd say I play with Coyley and Big O the most. Uh, Dempsey tries, bless him, but mm. nah, to be fair, De Dempsey's a good player. Dempsey's good. Um, played with Keane when Keane was there. Got some really good players. Cootsie, I know Cootsie's really good. Uh, got some really good players, but I'd say I'd say Louis the best. Um, closely followed by probably Big O, maybe Cootsie. Well, to be fair, if it was crazy golf, I, I could <laughs> take my hand on it, but normal golf, I'm not too keen on. But um, going back onto the football-wise, now this season we've been on an unbelievable run and 12 games unbeaten and it was not like we've played the lesser teams in the relegation we've beaten. We played Sunderland, Portsmouth, Helmand away, Peterborough, Wickham, Coventry, Ipswich. That run yeah. was... Where do you think the start of the season where we were kind of win, lose, draw, where did that kind of run came from? Again, um, you sort of, you know, you train pre. We, I felt we had a really good pre season this pre season. Um, Portugal trip was definitely one of the best ones I've had in terms of the workload we did. I thought everything was balanced perfectly. Um, you know, we got enough rest because in pre season everyone thinks it's run, 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 but it's not. You know, you need to. You need to have it balanced down. I felt like we had the right balance of rest. Um, so I thought, I, you know, I was buzzing for the start of the season. Um, so it was kind of like I think I think all the lads, you know, we've got an, we've got a group again that you know that has been put together that has quality that I don't think Fleet was ever seen before. Yeah, and that's no disrespect. That's no disrespect to other players, but sorry, but when would we have been able to get the likes of Paul Coops? Do you know what I mean? He's He's you just see in training, just the way he plays the games. Uh, you know, he's he's you can see why Sheffield United's holding in such regard. Uh, great guy as well. Um, really, really good, good guy. Um, so yeah, likes of him. Obviously, nice to get suits back. Um, 
obviously coily sign coily sign permanent which was Absolutely massive body. uh which was massive yeah so i think i think when people saw that coily sign i thought thought and i'm not surprised if you know if championship clubs are after coily it would not surprise me one bit yeah. um i think he i think he you know he he started something at Fleetwood and I think he wants to finish it in the right way in terms of, you know, at least minimum of promotion. Absolutely. Like the as, team as we all do. Absolutely. Sorry about that. Absolutely. The um team we've put together has just been great. And we started quite well, didn't we? And then yeah. around we we kind of had a thin squad just after Christmas. We had about 13, 14 players and we we weren't winning, but we weren't losing. What do you think, kind of, because, again, you have to take the moral hygiene. Billy, local boy, came into the side, and I know you're great with um, other other goalkeepers getting a chance, and you will back Billy up and help him improve his ease game as he will with you. What was it like at that period of time where uh, Billy came in, during that period of kind of win-lose, draw kind of thing? Yeah, of course. I mean, you know, Billy's like any other goalkeeper waiting for his opportunity to to shine, basically to have you know to have a. And I understand he's a local lad. You know, it came at my uh, dispense. It came at my sort of you know. I, I, I whether I agree with it or not, you know, it happened. So I've got to. I had to deal with that. Um, Billy got his opportunity, you know, and it's one of them things that you know the manager you know thought is the best thing for the team. So. I can't can I argue with that. Yeah, I can argue with that. But is it going to change anything? No, not really. Um, so get on with my job as I always do, as I always will. Uh, train as hard, if not harder, to get back that spot as I always do, and push Billy. And like you say, if, if Billy's the one that the club go with, then that's that, that's nothing I can do, you know, other than other than train as much as I can. You know, I've gone through things in my life where, yeah, don't get me wrong. I, I care and, and I absolutely hate being dropped or hate not playing because I absolutely love playing and for me personally I've got I've got goals and ambitions within within Fleetwood Town. You know, I started something at Fleetwood Town four years ago and you know I want to end that minimum with a promotion. That's you know, it's always been the case. I've always wanted to get back to the championship because I, I, I need to prove myself at that level. That's something that I'm confident about and confident that, you know, eventually that will happen and, and I firmly believe that will happen. So, you know, the club went with Billy um, at that time. You know, we, obviously we were in a bit of a win-lose-draw scenario. So it's kind of like, I don't know what the gaffer thought. I don't know, you know, why he put me back in, but he did. Um, you know, and then again, another another run, which is, uh, which is, it's been, uh, it's been nice. It was a shame that it got cut short, but some of the memories in those 12 games, I remember we, we, it kind of came at the end, I don't know if you remember, we, we were, on a, like a one win in 12 and we kind of come at the end of that didn't it where we drew three I think we drew two games we drew Bristol Rovers and Coventry then we beat Doncaster then beat Wimbledon and then beat um, Peterborough and it was a great run and then beating those teams I bet you were thinking we, we carry on this run we everyone should fear us well the thing is about League One and probably a lot of the leagues not necessarily the Premiership but the leagues in general you sort of know if you're there or thereabouts or in the mix within, I'm talking a couple of points in and around you, which League One really is like, you, there's always a couple of points between us because there's teams that throw and there's teams that start at the top and then drop off. And we always knew, regardless of who was playing, regardless of who was in the team, we always knew the team that we had, the squad that we had and have, uh, will get us to where we need to be because we all firmly believe that. And we all... I think we're all, I think we've got an experienced enough squad now to believe that in terms of, yeah, we've been there. And, you know, I've, I can talk about numerous conversations I've had with Cootsie and, and, and stuff like, it's stay, everyone stay calm, we'll, we'll, it'll come, it'll come. Sometimes, you know, you need, the, you need the defeat, you need the adversity to come out the other end. Um, and, you know, we're on, it has been cut short, we're on that run. And let's be honest, at this point, we'd have took absolutely anyone on. You know, we just, it was a matter of, we had nine games left. I know, you know, we can look at whoever we're playing. Every game in League One is difficult. So it wouldn't have bothered me if we were playing the top nine out of that nine nine games. I think we'd have still had a better chance of becoming second than anyone else just because of 
for one the squad we've got, another the run we were on, um, and, and like I say, the, the, the actual morale of the group. Every single player wants to play in the championship. There's not one player within that group I don't believe that doesn't want to play at a higher level or is just happy earning the money. I think everyone, including myself, wants that championship. You know that that honour of going, yeah, I've, you know, I've got fleet with most of the championship. Something that the club have never done before. You know, to have that badge of honour, um, I think it'd be special and. It's a shame it's been cut short as of yet, but you know we're still waiting on the decision of, of what will be. So I think you know, regardless of whatever happens, I feel like we'll still be carrying on if if I'm right in reading whatever the EFL have said. But um, you know, we've we've definitely put ourselves in a position to you know to be um, to be deserving of uh, promotion. I know that absolutely. Like you say, you said before, teams are starting to respect us now when. For who we are, and I remember going to Sunderland and one 0 up, and then they score in the ninety seventh minute, and we, yeah. they celebrated like the fans celebrated like they obviously won the cup final. And it's like, and it's like they they I still get tweaked about, it and it's like, well, you, you were in the Premier League three years ago, and it's like now yeah. you you, you could change to Fleetwood. Yeah, Sunderland thought that was a massive point for them, but I think the reaction of what Sunderland fans and the Sunderland players did that for them, I think that sort of look made us look go, hang on a minute, wait. We're not little old Fleetwood here. We're the we're the team that people want to be. We're the mm. team that people want to go. Yeah, we've got one over on Fleetwood, and 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 that's that's very rare for any team or any squad to have that sort of respect. You think you know what? Like, and and obviously it's proved by the league table now. After that result, yeah, it was a good. Don't get me wrong, it was a good point for them, but proved to be an even better point for us because we're on the run, and you know they're not in the playoff spots anymore, which is unfortunate for them because they are a good good side. They did play well at our place. There's no doubt about that. They. Um, at the, our place and at their place, um, they, they were a good side. Don't get me wrong, but the fact that they they're celebrating, you know, the way they did, home and away, to get an equaliser, not a win, an equaliser against us, says exactly, you know, where we've come and where we've come from the start of the season to where we are now, and Absolutely. and from the before and this from the season before because it's not just one season at a time. It's it's a it's a gradual thing that's that's been built at the football club and. You've got to respect that. It's, it, you're absolutely spot on, and it's like big clubs are starting to go. Fleetwood are a, Fleetwood are a good side, and Fleetwood are one of those sides where we don't want to go play them. We like I I I, I used to go to grounds, and we used to be our oh, Fleetwood are a lovely lovely club, and it's like I I, I said to my mate when we've not annoyed anyone yet, and yeah. to be successful, like, I know Gary Neville has said it at Salford. They need to start annoying different clubs if they want to get successful. And if we can annoy That's clubs and they will, don't, they don't, they don't want to play us. It's like good for us, isn't it? Of course it is. I think, like you say again about building that fortress at home. Nobody wants to come to Fleetwood. No fan wants to travel up to Fleetwood. Some some fans have treated Fleetwood like it's a day out. Like oh, we'll go for a day out in Blackpool or Fleetwood or wherever around the local areas. You know, we'll just have we'll have a, we'll have a drink up there. But no, it's not. It's not just a day out. It's it's, you're coming to war, do you know what I mean? You don't, you don't just take points off Fleetwood Town. And for as long as I've been at the club, I can honestly say we've not just handed any team the points. It's, even in the season where we struggled, I can honestly say we have never just handed teams the points. To the it's, been, it's always been a battle, yeah. And it's gone and gradually, gradually, gradually got harder and harder. And teams don't, do not want to play at Fleetwood. And I, I can understand why. Well... You're 27 now, and you were—I think you were 23 when you first signed. Yeah. You, you personally, and I know the squad from four years ago and this squad. I'd say it's a—I'd say even though we, we did kind of the same, we're similar in a lot of ways. But I feel this squad is at another level, like you said before. Yeah. What would you say is changing your game four years on from where you signed it? Only one appearance in the football league to now over 120 Fleetwood appearances in the football league. I think no. I think um, I got sent some some stats the other day. Uh, I think what it was, and it, it just it wowed me because I didn't realise. I'll tell you now exactly what you know what I'd actually done. You know, obviously I keep track of of what I've done and stuff like that. But yeah, so 141 league appearances, uh, 56 clean sheets, fifth highest EFL app maker in the club in the club's history, and first in goalkeepers. Um, and the most clean sheets in the FL by a uh, FTFC keeper, and 101, 161 apps all, all in all competitions. Like that to me, when I got sent that, I was like, I've come 
such a long way from when I first started. Like, if would I have took that off somebody when I was praying for a game, praying for a start? Absolutely, and I, and, and I've earned much more than that. And I've, you know, I've become a goalkeeper. I think that's respected in the division. Yes, um, I think you know a lot of teams go, oh yeah, you know, he's got they've got Alex Cairns, he's a good goalkeeper. That's how I feel. Um, and you know, with that, I've, I've you know, I'm not the tallest of goalkeepers, but I've got an aura about me where people go, he ain't going to concede. No one's scoring past him today, and that's that to earn over a goalkeeper's career is hard. Um, so to earn that at Fleetwood, where people, you know, I get that respect of when Cairns is in there, if they do get that unbelievable chance, there's a chance he's going to save it, um, and that's something I pride off because, you know, it's not it's not arrogance, it's not overconfidence, it's just something that I've earned with training, um, training hard, doing the doing the hours on the training pitch, and, and you know the saves that I make, you know, I wish I could say they just oh they just they just happen, but they happen every day in training, you know. Yeah. Me, Billy. Jillo, Nilo, everyone that I've worked with, you know, we train every single day to recreate the saves, recreate the uh, the gameplays, you know, the stuff. And obviously, you can't recreate everything because football's different to other sports where, you know, something could just happen off the cuff and, and your instincts probably take over a lot more than anything, you know. And, and I can honestly say I've always backed my instincts and, and my instincts usually pay me right. Absolutely, like my mate said to me, Oh, I want Kenzie. And I'm like, He goes, What? And he goes, What's Kenzie like? I went, No, you don't want him. He's rubbish. You, you, you definitely uh, don't, you don't really talk, no. But as, as like, I, I know when opposition fans come and they say, Very good keeper. And it's like, We've, we've got that. And I believe that not only does a goalkeeper need to be strong, just needs to be tipping balls over the, the bar and keeping the ball at the back of the net. He, they need to be a leader. Remember when Tom Heaton came in for Burnley last year? He yeah. all they had like twelve points, and he came in. I think they had the fourth highest points in the second half of the season. And I feel that you're a good like you're not obviously you said you're not the tallest of keepers, but you can still get that message across to your back three or back four. Well, that's it's, I'm glad you said that because to be fair to to, to Gillo, who even said about you know he obviously knows Heaton from Burnley. He said, oh, you know. I said, oh, I could do with, you know, having a chat with, with, with Heaton, you know, because very similar to position to what I I was in this season where he'd not, I know he'd come back from, I think he'd come back from injury where yeah. I, as I, I'd been dropped. Um, I'd like to have the conversation with him. I've not had it yet, obviously, because of what happened. I think Jillo was trying to organise it. Um, you know, I, I'd love to have, have that chat with him about knowing your place within a squad. Uh, knowing your respect within a squad and me coming back into the team you know I it was more for me than anyone else that I thought I know my place in this squad I'm respected um uh, not just by the squad the fans you know the staff and 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 like I say that's an aura that you know that I've developed over the years where people go they can rely on me I'm a reliable I'm a reliable person as much as don't just want to be reliable you know I want to be I want to be the best player in the squad I want to be the one that performs we can we can't everyone goes you know what and that because that benefits the team and, and that benefits us as a squad because if I'm at the top of my game then you know it's, it's only going to benefit the squad and you know this year has been it's been a weird year it's been weird for me you know after three games I got dropped and then seven games later I get dropped again and I'm kind of thinking like you know what have I done, done wrong here is there something that I've done at the club or and what have you so you start asking questions but then it resolves to train hard work your absolute I don't want to use the language, but <laughs> work work really hard. Um, constantly believe in what something that I, I've taken from what I would wish I'd have told my twenty year old self is take the criticism because criticism's going to come. Criticism comes from every single direction, um, whether it be internal, whether it be external. Criticism will come, um, but take that and use it as a positive. Something that I've taken out of my game that I didn't have before is that extra level headed and I've liked to thought I've always been level headed. I understand the game, I understand the fans, I understand um, you know, staff, I understand decisions made within a football club. Um, but I've always always however much however angry I've been at certain situations, I think I've always been able to resolve to that calmness where, all right then, you know, you don't need me now. You're gonna need me eventually. Just stay calm, do what's do and what will be will be. And you know, this season again has taught me so much more again you know I've not just been knocked back twice I've not been knocked back once sorry I've been knocked back twice still standing you know 
we're performing as a team you know ridiculously well and you know it's it's just something that I pride myself in that you know I'll never be I'll never be just not down and stay down I'll always uh, I'll always fight through and, and, and you know I think that's that's something that we've got as a squad you know I think every player within that within the team you know no matter how many times you get dropped no matter how many times you know stuff gets said you know I think we've got a good group where I go go on do you know what yeah put me back in I'll have another go at it yeah. you know just it's just just a good good environment to be in and you know it's it's something that something that you need if you want to get promoted I think I think you know looking my experience in terms of promotion has probably been the closest was the first season I think last season as well we were always I think we I think last season we were one or two players short yes of that push um of that final little bit uh, this year we're definitely not sure we've got enough in the tank and more and um, the season before you know we ended up finishing mid-table, whereas, you know, it could have been a, a horror season. We ended up finishing mid-table or just below mid-table, should I say. Um, season before that, playoffs, you know, I look back and it's been, um, the league table's always been up and down. I'd like to think, you know, my levels of, I've always done something else brilliant, has always, has always, you know, sort of, has always sort of been there. And, and, and you know, I, I do see comments what the fans make after games. I do see it. You know, I know some players don't look at the stuff, but I do see it. And, and you know when it's positive, you of course you want to look at it. When it's negative, you don't want to look at it. But either way, whichever way you look at, you know, social media and what have you, um, all of it's all of it's a bonus because if they see something that you don't, you maybe dissect your game a different way. If you see something they don't, you know, I'd like to, you know, you want to relay that onto them. Like, hang on a minute, this decision happened because you see it all the time in the Premier League with, and and you know they they analyse absolutely everything. Whereas we've only got one camera to look at. We look at one camera that zooms in and out of, you know, you only see one yeah. one part of it. So, you know, as a goalkeeper, and you see it behind behind my goal, things are a lot different from that position yes, than they are in any other position, you know. And everyone says, you know, goalkeepers don't do anything, but you know, as much as I do, the communication side of it is constantly staying in tune with the game. And going back to what you're saying about, you know, how I look at my career at, at Fleetwood, uh, the one I've absolutely loved it so far, and uh, long may it continue. Well, it's hard to talk. Uh, well, I think this season, this season did come up back with no fans. You'd see how much talking you did doing. You can see it from the stands and, and that's how good. But not only are you organising that way, you're probably one of the hardest training players at the club. You, you always try and not help yourself, but help others as well. And if you can improve them, you're not just improving them as a player, you're improving the club as well. Yeah, of course. I think, like you say, I think it'd be... It'd be very naive of me and, and very poor of me to not look at the bigger picture always because, of course, selfishly, I want to play every single minute of every single game. I want to, I want to get promoted with this club. Of course, like that's that's something for me. I want to play every, I, I want to play every game. I'm a footballer, and any footballer that says they don't want to play or they're not happy about playing is a liar, in my opinion, because you want to play and I'm, I'm looking back on the times that I've not played this season the three uh, the games that I was out with Gillo uh, playing and then the games when I was out with Billy I just want to get in like come put me on like play me play me do you know what I mean it's one of them just one of them things that you know I know what I bring to the team like as I've said um, and I think you know that to gain that respect as, as a player as a person you know I, I absolutely love the way this squad, this team, this club wants to wants to go up the up another level because if I win, uh, sorry, if the team wins, we all win. So you can't. Exactly. That, that's that's throughout the club without a shadow of a doubt. Exactly. Um, just the last couple of things, but yeah. um, going on to when I know obviously we can we we can win together, and I know Joey brought that method in. Um, we if we if we win, we win, and if we lose, we learn something new, and we yeah. learn something new every day, and we get better. And yeah. after I've noticed after kind of defeats, I remember the Gillingham game. I know Ash Easton spoke then, great leader. I would put you in that boat now, the experienced player, and you're not too scared to say we've not been good enough today, and you will do that interview. Yeah, um, we played we played Burton um, away, and I got asked to do the media. And when you've lost the game, especially the way we lost that game, uh, one nil away from home this season, um, you know you don't want to do it. 
but you've got a duty to not just players within that dressing room. Um, you've got a duty to the fans. You've got a duty to you know the chairman, the chief exec, everyone that wants to hear what went wrong. Um, because, like I say, the fans pay the money to see you. And the minimum we can do is give them an explanation of what we think personally. It's not a, it's not what the team thinks. It's what what I think personally. And you know, I think any any opportunity, you know, even in meetings after defeats, you know, I'll be one of the first to speak up because I have I have an opinion, whether that's right or wrong. I, I couldn't care less. You know, it's my opinion. Um, if somebody wants to guide that opinion to their, you know, if, if the gaffer doesn't agree with me, I'm happy with that because I'd like to see his point of view. If a lad, one of the lads isn't happy with me. I'd like to hear their point of view and that's, you know, I'm more than happy to, I think there's, there's a, a good number of players now that are happy to do that in that squad where they're happy to take um, the burden of what other lads might not. Uh, and that's no disrespect to any of the lads, but not being funny, we've got, in that, in that back four now, or in the back three, however you want to call it, um, I'm the most experienced in, within that group. So if I wasn't taking the majority of the heat, then what type of leader would I be? What type of player would I be? I'd be, you know, I'd be a con man. So uh, for, for me, I, I, know, I know I can take criticism. I always, always have been able to and always will be able to. Um, but I also will defend myself if it's wrong. And I also will defend other players if they've been, um, if they've been you know, been told that they shouldn't have done this or they shouldn't have done that. You know, I'll be like, well, hang on a minute. You know, and I'm more than happy to voice my opinion because... Like you say, every team needs leaders and, and you lead in different ways. You know, I'm not the most, I'm not, I won't get in your face, I won't scream at you. I'll tell you in a way that man to man, human to human, yeah. you can stand and you can, you can actually take something from it rather than being screamed at. I just don't, I don't see, you know, some players don't need that. Some players find that, they, they probably don't even listen to you, to be honest with you. Yeah. You used to scream, like, don't get me wrong, everyone needs a rocket now and again. That's, that's me included, everyone needs a rocket. Um, but, in terms of leadership, there's different ways of leadership. There's, there's, you know, there's the aggressor, the one that does it. There's somebody that, for me, does it on the pitch week in, week out, where they go, do you know what, fair play, they're leading in their own way. One that is in the gym, first man in the gym, first man, uh, last man out of the, cha uh, the changing room, that's another leader. You know, all, there's all different types of leaders where some people don't see. I said, I said somebody asked me, like, um, a while back about uh, Captain... Uh, Leeds United, Johnny Alson, uh, and he was one of the youngest captains Leeds have ever had. Um, can't remember how old he was at the time, but he wasn't the most vocal. He wasn't loud. He wasn't. He wasn't. You know, he wasn't like the band. He wasn't anything like that. But what he did is he turned up for training every single day, practiced in the gym, went out and trained, and was one of the best trainers out there. Came in, but and that is for young lads coming through. Because obviously, I was good, uh, good few years. Younger than Johnny Alston, I was just coming through when he was captain. Um, I think what was I was the first year pro when he was captain of the team uh, in the championship. And what he did, he, he led in a way where everyone just respected him. And I took a lot from that, from that age, because I thought, you don't do anything other than train right, do everything right, eat right, prep right, sleep right, Look after your body. You, you you just do that. You do what you're supposed to do, and what people expect from a footballer. Um, and what he didn't know, and I, I don't know if anyone's told him this, but the effect he had on all the young younger lads before that, and the players that have come through under him, or when he was captain, is is nasty. Look at it, like your Lewis Cox, so your Mowats, uh, your Sam Byrams, your Charlie Taylor. have all got that level headedness and that that will to that extra bit of work ethic. And, and you stay grounded and, and, and you lead in a certain way. And I think that's big respect to him as a player. And, and he's, he doesn't, I don't, he probably doesn't know this, but it definitely, uh, it definitely had an effect on my career and the way I'd see me leading the team as well. He's absolutely superb. And you look at the Fleetwood team, I can see you being a future captain, I really do, with the way you can lead a team and the way you're organised and how you can help others. You look at Glenn Whelan, a brilliant leader, been at Villa, been at Stoke City, yeah. um, very good leader, experienced Cootsie as well, suits at the back, he's just a man mountain like, nothing gets past it. Louis Coyle again, experienced, I think Louis Coyle in these last, I look at you and Louis Coyle, I think, well, you both kind of came with similar stories, I haven't played much in the Football League and you've really come on leaps and bounds and that's one thing I've really respected about that. And, um, but going on, 
a being a good leader, do you want to go into management one day? Um, I get asked this now. Uh, it's not something I've ever thought about um, in terms of management. Um, I get asked. I've, I've been asked this so many times. Would you be a manager? Would you? And I don't think I don't think you know until until the end. Do you know what I mean? I don't think you know until the end because right now, no, because all I can see is being a player. Um, all I can see is doing what I'm doing um, as a player. Like I don't think management. I don't think I'd go into management personally. Um, I just don't feel like it. It would be for me. Um, don't get me wrong. I I'd like to think I'd get the respect of a of a dressing room. Um, but you know, there's so many other things that you have to deal with that people don't see. You know, you have to deal with people's contracts. You have to deal with all sorts of stuff that that absolutely goes on uh, behind the scenes. And and that for me, like you know, that's why I think you know a lot of teams go the head coach role, uh, route now instead of a manager because yeah, you know, obviously gets the players and everything they want. But you know, they basically want the manager now just to coach and um, yeah. So you know, as as a coach, probably yeah, I could see myself being a coach. Manager, probably not so much because I think the managers it's becoming it's becoming an old thing now. Yeah. Uh, whereas I, I I think you know managers are brilliant because I see I've worked with man managers and players and managers that get the best out of the team from just being a man manager. Um, for instance, Neil Warnock. I think what you know, I see that side of it. I think that's brilliant. But then the other side of it, like you say, the contracts and all the stuff that goes off behind the scenes, don't think that's for me. Yeah, fair enough. Just last one. We've got nine games left. What in we we want the season to continue because we're on a roll. And I think if doing a vote, you, in my opinion, I'd love the EFL to come in or some sort of place that come and help these clubs out with kits to get them through. And for me, we've got nine games left. Entry season, you've got to finish it. And points per game is good, but I don't feel like you get a fair. Reflecting on reflection on the season, we get the playoffs. But I honestly believe we could have challenged Coventry, even though they were flying. I thought, yeah. why not? But in your opinion, nine games left. What should happen? Um, it's it, you know, it's so difficult to say what I want and what should happen. It's like are two different things. You know, I want um, us to play all nine games and and potentially finish first or second and go up automatically. That would be what I want. Um, but again, none of us have ever seen what's happening right now ever before. You know, we've never seen it in our lifetimes. We'll probably never see it again. Um, what is happening and, you know, it's, it's devastating to the world exactly what is happening. So I can't, I can't say what should happen because what should happen is ideally everyone should play every game and we should see the season out. But is that going to be possible? I don't know. So there has to be contingencies that's put in place. The AFL look like they've put contingencies to the to the chairmans and stuff, and I think they're having a vote and what have you. But whatever whatever gets decided, I think you know we put ourselves in a good position anyway, regardless of what gets decided. Don't you know? I don't think they will. They, I don't think they will cut the season like and just say that's it. It's done. You are where you are. I think that's already been ruled out. If I'm right, I don't know for sure. Because um, like I say, you never know. If there's another spike. It could get knocked on the head again. Um, but I think you know we're in, we start the competition. We should end it yeah. um, because, especially you know, if, if if we were if we were seventeen, eighteen, I think you have the same. Oh, like you know, you're in you're in the competition. But I think that obviously the thing with the with the fans as well not being able to see is a massive effect on clubs and and stuff. And you know, I'm I'm not a director. I'm not a chairman, so I don't understand the the ins and outs, the financial, you know, the the financial uh, ramifications of it. So I'm not gonna go in and say this should happen, that should happen. But, you know, I'd like to see the season finish. Um, if it does end up points per game or in the playoffs, then we put ourselves in a position with only three games to get promoted. Would we have took that Would we have took that at the beginning of the season to be in the playoffs, three games chance to get promoted? I think you would have done. I think yeah. any team would do. Yeah, so, you know, to say where we were last season, we finished 10th or 11th. Um, I think going on from last season, I think, again, it's been a massive progression. Not just a little progression because uh, every team at the end of the day, especially in League One, aims to get promoted out of League One. Um, I can't say any team just wants to survive in League One. Um, so to say we, we're in the top six of 24, 23 teams, obviously we're barely not being in. Uh, I think that's a big credit to the squad, big credit to uh, you know obviously the staff that have put that in place. Um, 
the ups and downs we've had over the course of the season. I think, you know, it's big credit to, we've big, we, no matter what happens, we've got an opportunity to get promoted. And, you know, I think the squad that we've got will will do everything they can do. And I know they're doing everything they can do, in this, even in this, because we stay in contact, obviously, through WhatsApp and whatever. And everyone's grafting, even now. They're always doing the runs. And Jimmy and Yule, the fitness coaches, they're keeping everyone up to date. Right, lads, this is what you're doing today. Get this done. You know, I think everyone's keeping on track with it. So, big respect to them to, to controlling the situation the best they can and making sure the lads are, are going back as fit as possible. And and what they, what they have done and what I thought was brilliant, probably different to what they, they said, just go and enjoy some family time. Just go and enjoy being at home with, with your families that you don't always get. And I, me, me selfishly, I, I would never have had this time uh, I've been able to spend with my newborn uh, and obviously Abby. Uh, I would never have got this. I'd have had six weeks, potentially, maybe not even that, if we'd have had playoffs to spend with them. Um, so, you know, I've took this opportunity to, to enjoy being around my family. Um, obviously, you know, I, especially when we had an hour a day, my hour a day of work outside this house, I've gone on runs and stuff like that. I've, I've done everything I feel I can to be prepared for whatever happens next. And, you know, if the season was to end now, I can look back on it and say I've definitely progressed because I've been not back. I've been brought back in. I've been not back. I've been brought back in. And I've definitely finished the season stronger or finishing the season stronger than what I am when I started it. So there's been another progression for me personally, whether it be mental, whether it be, you know, the way I am. Um, definitely progression. You know, I think obviously it's been proven that maybe I am a leader in this, in this squad and, uh, has been proven on, on a number of occasions. So, I'll, you know, I'll continue to lead the best I can, uh, give advice to the players around me the best I can and personally look after myself, um, <laughs> keep enjoying my football because at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. I absolutely love the game. So, I'll continue to do that and, and continue to push myself to, uh, to be the best I can be. Well, Alex, thank you very much and great guest as ever. Thank you for watching and hopefully another promotion this season, eh? It'd be nice, man. It would be nice. Thank you, guys. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Cheers, Alex.